Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Michelle Sergio, Kirk Stephenson, Miss Music Teacher, and everybody welcome our brand new patron, Karen. Hey, Karen. Yay. On this episode of DTNS, the Apple Vision Pro went up for sale. Any takers? Plus, Gavin Purcell from AI for Humans tells us how they made an AI co-host. Uh-oh. They're coming for us, Sarah. <laughs> Not yet. Don't worry. Not that good. <laughs> this is the Daily Tech News for Friday, January 19th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the top tech stories in snowy Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, co-founder, AI for Humans, and former showrunner for The Tonight Show and G4 TV's Attack of the Show, Gavin Purcell. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here. This is like a really fun thing. Uh, I told uh, Tom before he jumped on, I used to listen to Tom and Molly's podcast way back when. And obviously, Sarah and I used to work together we did. at Attack of the Show. And it's been really fun to reconnect with her as well, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Though this is a pleasure, and I love that you, you. I love and fear that you have an AI co-host to talk well, about today. It's a very weird thing. Every day, every so we do the show once a week, and every week we create a new one. And part of it is trying to show people like what you can do with this stuff. The other part of it is we want to show how broken a lot of it is. Yeah, so we'll yeah. get into that when we talk about it. Excellent, excellent. All right, we're going to talk about that a little later in the show. Let's start with the quick hits. The Rabbit R1, a handheld personal assistant device shown off at CES, announced that its large language model will be powered by a San Francisco startup called Perplexity. There's no cost for using it on the device or to power search results, but the first 100,000 R1 buyers will also get a year of Perplexity Pro that includes more than 300 complex queries and advanced file upload support. Rabbit R1 ships in March or April, depending on when you pre-ordered, for $199. Apple made its proposal to allay the European Union's concerns that its restrictions on using the iPhone's NFC chip might be an antitrust violation. Apple proposes letting developers operating within the European economic area access mobile payment tech and let choosers choose an alternative to Apple Pay as a default payment option on the iPhone. Just in Europe, they're going to do that. Uh, Apple committed to keeping those options for at least 10 years. The commission is now seeking feedback from the community on Apple's proposal. SLIM is on the moon or SLIM, as the kids call it. Japan's large lander for investigating moon, which is also known as the moon sniper, reached the lunar surface on uh, early Saturday. That was Japan time. The space agency JAXA, G, uh, J-A-X-A rather, said it was transmitting data, but the solar panels were not generating power, possibly because of an unfortunate orientation. The agency will gather as much data as it can while the existing battery is, is still in operation. Japan Japan becomes the fifth country to land a device on the moon after the U.S., the Soviet Union, China, and India. Wall Street Journal sources say competition officials from the European Commission intend to block Amazon's bid to purchase Roomba maker iRobot. Thursday, the representatives from Amazon were in a meeting to discuss the deal. A deal rejection would still need formal approval from the commission's 27 top political leaders before a final decision would be made. Uh, that has been apparently given a February 14th deadline. Oh, Valentine's Day. In the meantime, Amazon could still walk away from the deal on its own. The European Commission raised competition concerns about the deal back in November. Amazon missed a deadline last week to submit remedies that would address those concerns. So not doing what we said Apple did do earlier. And also making people wonder, is Amazon just going to walk away? Maybe not, but maybe. Maybe they give up. Yeah. Microsoft has a new Windows 11 integration for Android users. So when clicking a Windows system tray alert displayed immediately after taking a snapshot on an Android phone, an image will then open in the Snipping Tool app on your PC to edit or share with somebody. Microsoft is offering this first to Windows insiders in the Canary and Dev channels running Windows 11 Insider Preview Build 23619. Sarah, I'm a little disappointed in us with that Amazon story. When they didn't respond, we should have said all they got was a vacuum. No. Because it's a, it's a Roomba. Yeah, 
No, it's that, that's good an, one. Good laugh. one, Tom. Good one, Tom. Laugh. It's Friday humor. Okay. All right. Let's let's get into it. All right. Uh, I'm loopy because I got up at five in the morning Pacific time to order an Apple Vision Pro for us to try out. Uh, I went up for pre-orders in the U.S. at 8 a.m. Eastern. No reports of problems ordering. Uh, DTNS was able to get a device for delivery on February 2nd, first day. Uh, didn't have any hangups or, or weird, uh, weird things. I did see some folks on Mastodon saying that their delivery dates were mid-February, that they didn't have a problem ordering it, but they didn't get the February 2nd date. So that implies that demand was at least greater than supply. Uh, we also got a lot of details in the ordering process that had not been announced before. Specifically, uh, Sarah, I know you saw some people frustrated that we didn't know there were multiple storage options ahead of time. 256 gig, 512 gig, and a terabyte uh, were the three storage options. Yeah. Like an extra, what, $300, I think, for the terabyte option? Mm. Um, refresh rates were, were listed now, 90 hertz, 96 hertz, 100 hertz, uh, 24 frames per second, and 34, 30 frames per second uh, video playback. Uh, and you can also mirror your Vision Pro view to an AirPlay-enabled device so that other people can see what you are seeing. Uh, Apple has been promoting this all week as the ultimate entertainment device. Uh, we talked earlier this week about all the apps you can get, some 3D content coming to Disney+, Plus. how Netflix is only going to be available in the browser. And the same is true for YouTube. YouTube uh, mentioned on Thursday that they will also block their iPad app from showing up and only be available to the browser. And Bloomberg says their sources say Spotify is going to do the same. Uh, to be clear, you have to take measures to do that. All iPhone and iPad apps are available in the Vision Pro without alteration, but YouTube, Netflix, and apparently Spotify will not let their apps show up on the Vision Pro section of the App Store. So... What, if anything, do you think this smooth order process we experienced today say about demand? And 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 for that matter, what does success even look like uh, for the Vision Pro? Uh, Gavin, what did you did you try to order one? Are you into this? So I am very into it, but I did not try to order one. Um, I wouldn't watch all the videos today. Obviously, when it first was announced, I was pretty excited about it. But I've told Sarah about this uh, uh, on our pod a little bit. Like I have been a big proponent of VR and AR and all that stuff. To me. I do want to kind of wait a little bit for it. The price tag is a lot, right? And and my issue with the quests have been is I really love them, but then I put them in a box and I don't see them again for a while. And I kind of might just be waiting for the next iteration. I know for a fact that I'm going to wear a computer on my face at some point in the, future, yeah, yeah. in the future, but I don't know if I'm ready for it yet. And after watching, a lot of the people have said it's heavier than they expected. And that is something that worries me a little bit based on how beautiful it is and how amazing it's made. You know, they, I think they went, I don't know, this is me talking about like it's a, a steel versus a lot of other things are more plastic. So the heaviness might affect people's feelings about it. And obviously a couple of generations down the road, that's great. That said, look, I love what the idea of this is. My big thing with, with VR was always the number one use of it is let me put a screen on my ceiling and lay back in my bed and watch my, you know, hundred inch TV. Like that's, fantastic and that kind of feels like what they're starting with here yeah the whole kind of media first thing is mm -hmm. it's it, interesting um when i say interesting it's not because it's not a great idea it's just because i use vr in such a specific way you know i talk about this on the show all the time i love my exercise apps that means that sometimes i have to have that thing and i'm talking about the quest because that's the only vr headset i've ever had three iterations of it though you know, I have to have that very, very tight on my head because I'm literally jumping around. So the whole kind of weight thing just plays into the fact that I am being physical with mm -hmm. the device. The weight uh, being an issue while sitting there being productive and perhaps sitting at your virtual desk space, which might be nicer than the virtual, <laughs> the, the actual physical desk space that you have otherwise. You know, that is... That all remains to be seen. Some people are going to be like, ah, you get used to it. Other mm -hmm. people are going to be like, ah, no, it's not for me. And I think if you if you have a, you know, I, I mean, I'm lucky enough to sit in a physical office right now that's very comfortable. But at my last house, I didn't have one at all. You know, I, I, I think that that all plays into a lot of this. And yeah, there were some nitpicky things in the pre-ordering process from a few people being like, okay, we have... 
storage options, but we didn't know about them ahead of time. And everyone's trying to, you know, if you really care, you know, at 5 a.m. Pacific uh, time on the dot, you're up, you're trying to order because you know what happens when they sell out. And you're sort of like, ah, do I want 256 or one terabyte? Ah, um, you know, Tom, you were like one terabyte. Got it. You know, that was my choice. <laughs> Default but, max. But, yeah. but I do think that's, you know, that's sort of a strange thing to not tell people ahead of time. It is. I agree. Yeah. Because it's 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 something pe they almost always tell tell you so that you can pre-configure. They didn't do any of right. that pre-configuring stuff like they do with the iPhone either. Yeah, yeah. That, I wonder that, if it affects the weight too. My question is, I mean, I don't know enough about hard drive sizes, but like it could. I mean, it's, right? fla it's flash memory, so it probably oh, yeah, doesn't. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. Six hundred to six hundred fifty grams is what they listed as being, depending on the light seal and the headband configuration. Uh, that's about one point three pounds. I would imagine the optical inserts would add more weight. Yes. Maybe, yeah, that's right. For people who that. need glasses, is that, yeah, yeah, do you have to get a special version of it because of glasses? So I was ordering it for uh, Sarah and Eileen to do on their new Apple show, which we'll talk about uh, in a second. Uh, so it does a face scan when you order it. It says, we want to, we want to wow. set this up for you. So I handed the phone to Eileen and she did the face scan. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to mean because we're not picking it up in person. We're having it delivered. So I don't know if it gets a different strap based on what it thinks your size is or how it tells the size. Uh, but it, it, it had to do a little face ID thing. Uh, and, and then it asked you, do you wear contacts and all of that? And I was answering for these two who wear contacts. And so it was like, oh, you don't need optical inserts. If it had been me, I don't wear contacts. Yeah, I probably would need optical inserts. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, and again, I'm, you know, I'm thinking ahead. It's like, okay, what if this was something that I would be wearing for a, a big chunk of the workday? I do wear contacts. Um, if I don't wear contacts, I can't see anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's either glasses or contacts. If I was wearing this with inserts, would that somehow benefit me? I don't know. Kind of, kind of a specific use case. Yeah, but I, I, I think you know question. we'll we'll like, all know more ice about that from the yeah. optical inserts than the contacts. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the contacts are you know they're you put them in and you forget they're there until, you know, end of day when you take them out. Um, I can't imagine that anything else would be easier than this, but there are also a lot of people who are like, contacts aren't for me, but uh, I don't want to wear glasses under my Vision Pro. That's insane. Um, there there are inserts for people who wear glasses for other VR headsets. I know that, but Apple is very much pushing that not being your solution because it's going to be clunky. I can't wait just to see all everybody's goofy eyes through these things, right? That's the thing I'm most excited about is all the shots of people's eyes like popping people out. People taking other. selfies of themselves yes. with the goofy eyes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, we're only talking about two hours of battery life on this thing too, by the way. So if you're not plugged in, yeah. you're, you're not going to have time for a lot of eye strain. Before. Well, that's the thing I think about is like standing up and moving around is one of the coolest parts of VR. I remember I got into the new Half-Life. I don't know if you have both have played Half-Life 3, but Half-Life, is it Half-Life 3? It's Half Alex, right? Or whatever it's called. But oh, yeah. that, that experience is incredible. But you, you know, it's designed to kind of do while sitting down and kind of move around a little bit. But like the idea of like standing up and kind of moving in a space is one of the coolest things about VR to your, to your point there too, Sarah, about exercise. I, again, just think that this is going to be really cool. It's a computer on your head. And yes, will it be useful for me to work? The thing that I thought when I saw this demo, I saw all the new demo videos are out today and they're fascinating because it's all Apple polished. It's like a person uh -huh. sitting next to them. Uh, the shot of like when you go into your work environment and you're surrounded by trees, and then you turn to the left and suddenly there's a person there like who's in the real world. There's a dystopian thing that starts to creep in a little bit to me, which is like, hey, ignore everything out here because we can create this entirely new experience. And that is coming. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that version, whether mm -hmm. that's a, the metaverse for good or for bad, but like we are definitely going to get there at some point soon, I feel like. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we just launched a new podcast in the DTNS family called Apple Vision Show today, uh, hosted by Eileen Rivera and Sarah Lane. Uh, Me? So, Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> I, did I forget to tell you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um, it, no, we're, we're, we're all very excited about it. Yeah. So, so tell folks what they can expect from this. So, um, so Eileen and I got together. Um, this is Vision Pro, uh, you know, adjacent, just because we were like, ah, you know, this, you know, could be kind of a 
fun, different new year for Apple in 2024. But Eileen, for those of you who know her from um, All About Android um, in the past, was kind of, you know, known as an Android fan. But she also really likes the Apple ecosystem and has kind of gone toward that uh, as of late. I've always been in the a Apple ecosystem. And a show that is, you know, based on cool new stuff, tips and tricks, lifestyle, what does it mean? You know, what can Apple do better? We're hoping to tackle all of those topics. Um, so it is very much uh, a show for people who like Apple. If you don't, um, you might also like it just to kind of know what your competition is. You know, we're, we're hoping to, to, to make a show um, for everybody and we're really excited about it. So we hope you'll join us. Please do. Uh, you can find it at youtube.com slash daily tech news show uh, or go get it as a podcast at applevisionshow.com. If you haven't seen it already, AI for Humans, which is the show hosted by Kevin Pereira and Gavin Purcell, who's joining us today, aims to demystify AI and kind of bring it down to the everyday use case for folks through comedy and humor. Now, Gavin, you're one part of the two-part team, although there's a little bit more of a team member thing going on here. One of the more interesting elements of the show is an AI co-host that... I think you, uh, you know, there, there's a new AI co-host in every episode. So before we talk about how you do it, here's a sample of how it works for your audience. I want to just be upfront and say, are you using us to try to sell gaming PCs to your TikTok audience? Oh, get real, old bros. <laughs> I'm here to share my journey and have some fun with you guys. But hey, I won't deny that part of being an influencer is about sharing stuff I love and believe in. Oh, right. Like the CLX gaming PC no. isn't just a product. <laughs> it's part of my everyday life. It's like when you find something super cool, you just want to tell everyone about it. Uh -huh. Right. So, I mean, it's not, you know, Apple Vision Pro prices. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> so, you know, it's positively free. But yeah, like, let's, okay, let's go back to like how... How does that get generated? Where okay, so, yeah, I mean, so every week we make a new one of these. And, and the reason we wanted to do this was so that we could really kind of dive into both using these tools that people, you know, are hyped up to, to all hell, but also like to really like see what it feels like to interact with a virtual character. It's actually not the most technical thing. There are ways you can make it more technical. And obviously, when you're watching that clip, you can see it's not like it's not meant to look lifelike, although, you know, it's getting closer and closer with these same off the shelf tools. I mean, it looks pretty lifelike. The audio maybe isn't there yet, but I can it's tell not which two are the far. humans, though. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Thank God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm most happy that's the case because I hate to tell you guys right now. I'm not human. This is the whole oh, thing. I, I just, oh, you wow. Know. You were the AI all along. All along. So it's a it's kind of a multi-step process, but it all starts with using ChatGPT. Um, you can use open source models as well. Like I don't know if, how familiar you are with Bakuna or all these other sorts of um, Mixtral, all these other kind of really interesting open source LLMs, which are free and often you can run locally. We find that GPT-4, which is ChatGPT+, which is the one you pay for, is actually pretty good at this. And essentially what you have to start with, and I, I always tell people who are interested in, in what we do, but also just ways to use ChatGPT that's different, is you have to ask ChatGPT how to help you along the way. So what I often start these, these prompts with is something like, hey, I have something I want to try to do. I want to create a character that will be part of our show. And I explain I want them to be an AI co-host. I want them to know what our show is. And then I also say... The whole idea with this is that you are going to interact with us in a way so you are not giving stage directions, which things these things often want to do. You're not mm -hmm. responding in emojis, which it often wants to do as well, too. And you kind of do this back and forth. But then you say, like, ask me the questions about what you need to know. And it will often answer things like, OK, great. I get the idea of this. What is their motivation? What is their name? Do they have a catchphrase or do they have something they go back to? And what Kevin and I often do with these is we'll put like a little like kind of nugget of something that we're going to get to. So there's a little bit of like television producer slash writer part on our side of like this game of trying to figure out what the, the, the back, the back end of it is. Like for instance, we booked one of our, one of our ad hosts was a, was a PR expert and she uh -huh. came with ostensibly to be our PR rep, but we found out that she had an energy drink called monster milk that she was promoting. And that was what we put that into the prompt. 
Uh-huh. This is the weird thing that happened, though. When we had her, we said to her halfway through the interview, we, it's all non-scripted. We're doing this in real time, and, and it does, need, you do need to edit down. I'll tell you guys really quickly, briefly, how you, how you get the rest of it. But when we asked her, hey, take some drinks of your Monster Milk, and we <laughs> added into the prompt, Monster Milk is like um, kombucha in that it has, like, there is some alcohol that you can get in it. She actually got drunk, and it was fascinating. Like, <laughs> like the interaction changed with the with the AI co-host. So. Now, okay, so d- is there some the monster milk? She, she yeah. uh, this particular co-host, this particular one was a she. Yes, yeah, came with. I mean, are people trying to like drop um, products into AI models in a way that this would come up organically on a show like yours? I mean. Yes and no. I think we were playing more with the idea of like the world of influencers and what they do, right? Like, and that's in this in the instance we showed, like the CLS gaming PC. We, Kevin, I just get deluge. I'm sure you all do. If you're on TikTok, you see the TikTok shop people, right? And like, it feels like TikTok is now like one half TikTok shop. And we were like, what would be funny is to have somebody who is an AI influencer who was using uh, our show. To sell things that they could get money ah, off of, so that's so, why that came up. That's so that that's the up. you're actually nudging them in that yes, direction. Yes, yes, yeah. so they're not organically coming up with that. In fact, I think one of the things that's interesting about AI in general is it's really what you. It's kind of what is that? Is it WYSIWYG or what you see? That's not the right yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. What, you, like, see is what, what you, you know, what you put in is what you get out, right? Oh, garbage like in, really, garbage out. Yeah, garbage. <laughs> that's better. That's closer yeah, yeah. to it. Garbage in, garbage out. So I think you do have to help it. Um, just really quickly, chat GPT, you get the right prompt and you figure out like exactly kind of what to do. And it's a pretty long prompt because you have to think it's it's kind of setting chat GPT up to do this. So all of the text back and forth we do through chat GPT. So in a raw version of our podcast, you know, there's a lot of stuff we're editing down, but like we'll ask a question, we'll type it in, and then we use a program called Eleven Labs. So if you're familiar with Eleven mm-hmm. Labs, it is a um speech to text generation. It's kind of become the one that that is out there. They have a bunch of like uh, people have created their own voices, but you can also use their voice lab to create your own voice. And I, and I will say, as always with anything AI, there are all sorts of legal quagmires, right? Sure. And and I think that it's an important thing to just recognize as somebody who deals in the legal world, uh, I'm sorry, deals in the AI world, that there are all these legal questions. Eleven Labs is the one that seems to be kind of rising above the rest. And and we're big fans of, of creating your own models or making sure the models you're using are, are reasonably legally vetted. Um, we take the voice, and there's another program that's called D ID, which is what we use to animate the face. Which is this is so funny because I think this this company started as a marketing company to kind of create these these models. And what it allows you to do is you just upload a photo, and often our photos we get our photos from Midjourney. We we create a prompt, and the whole prompt on Midjourney is to try to create. Um, a person that looks like they're on a podcast and, and yeah, you yeah. have a character, right? Yeah. Upload the photo from a journey, upload the audio, and then it kicks out a file that looks like that influencer, right? And then it's a then it's the television slash, you know, media magic of editing it down and making it so, so that it fits. But it's really not complicated. And, and one thing we try to encourage on our show is like, everybody can go try this. Like the stuff is off the shelf. It's not free oftentimes, which is one of the things Kevin and I joke about a lot is, you can run up a monthly bill with these yeah. tools very fast, very <laughs> yeah. fast. Like right. I think you know, between ChatGPT, Eleven Labs, Runway ML, which is a really cool program to try to use and make animated films with. You know what I mean? Like things like that. It's like a hundred bucks a month after everything, which is kind of crazy. So going back to the to the performance aspect of it, when you're chatting with the ChatGPT version, are you? doing text to speech speech to text or is it just you saying it and then chatting it and you reperform it later how does that how does the actual performance of the interaction work so we are so obviously if you guys have seen probably chat and there's another really great app that i always suggest people to try out called pi pi mm-hmm. ai which is by the inflection ai guys um there are a lot of really interesting voice to voice chat gpt's type models now what we're doing is doing text back and forth and then cutting and pasting text into 11 labs. But you can do that in nearly real time. Now, it's if we were streaming like this, it would be yeah, slightly yeah. different. Right? It, you would have to like really have it kind of set up ahead of time and maybe a little bit scripted more. But we are trying to, on the podcast, tr- keep it organic as possible. So it's probably like, you know, we'll get an answer from ChatGPT. We'll put it into 11 labs and it'll take like, 10 seconds to come back, maybe a little bit, a little less sometimes. So it's still fast. It's just not instant. Okay. And, but, but you're reacting to that. 
Yes. Then. yes yeah, yeah. Yes, and then yeah, yeah. and then magic of editing, removing the pauses and everything. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And what the it, biggest thing is, it's like stuff feels. The more realistic it is, the better, which means you have to leave the ums and ahs in. And also, mm -hmm. the weirder it is, the better for us. So we turn up. There's a little slider on Eleven Labs that lets you turn up, the, <laughs> yeah. like essentially the weirdness factor. Uh -huh. So you get all these like inflections in weird ways something talks, and I think that makes it more fun as well. Yeah, it's, it's good editing too. I mean, you it's had more human and, and all yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For anybody who spends time blows. editing humans, it's. Yeah, it, it's, I always tell people, you know, on the editing side, it's like, if you take out all the ums and ahs, it doesn't sound right. Nope. No, it doesn't sound right at you all. You know, it's like, yeah. sure, it sounds polished, you know, but when, when someone else listens to it, they're like, yeah, it's not quite yep. right. You That's know, exactly you gotta, right. you gotta be a little human-esque with all this stuff. What gave you the idea to try this out? Like to, 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 and to continually go through uh, trying it out and, and showing like the limitations and the benefits of it. So uh, Kevin and I both got very kind of like really fascinated with this world back when GPT-3 came out, which so Kevin and I have kind of stayed in touch over time. But when GPT-3 came out, which I think was kind of like mid to late 2021, we were both really interested in it. And then kind of it, what all happened when, um, the summer of 2022, I think, was when Midjourney and Stable Diffusion launched. And we were really interested in what was going on with this. And as somebody that's worked in the media business for a while, and obviously I come from a talk show background, I, I, I see something interesting happening here. And, and I, again, don't think this is necessarily going to replace the people that are the humans of the world. But I do think it's something in the human space we have to navigate because not only are we going to be seeing a lot more of this stuff, um, but it's also going to be something that everybody starts to need to know. So it really was like an educational journey at first, which sounds so lame, but it's like, that's yeah. how some of the best stuff happens, right? Like Absolutely. I was curious about it and kind of interested in, and, and I think, you know, looking back on our format, I think we started, there was a, the, our very first episode, if you go back to listen to our very first episode, there was a, an AI co-host we created called Gash. And Gash was, unfortunately, we didn't mean to create him this way, but he became very like, he was like an alpha male uh, nihilist who hated everything. Oh and gosh. it was like a little much. And Kevin and I were both like, this I know is that really guy. fascinating, but <laughs> yeah. we maybe yeah. we should bounce around. Yeah, we don't really like our co-hosts. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He was an asshole. He was a jackass to us, and it was yeah. really interesting. And it was <laughs> off-putting for some people. So the way of doing a new host every week is we get a chance to A, have fun with it. And then mm -hmm. also be like, you can show people the different types of voices, the different types of visuals, the different types of stuff you can do. And, you know, it's always a fun thing in that way. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, well, we believe we have humans in our audience. Uh, and the only way to tell is to ask them to email us and then we read their emails and evaluate it. Uh, and that's how we usually wrap up the show with the mailbag. In response to our discussion on the future of podcasting, we were we were kicking that around with Justin Robert Young on yesterday's show. Katie wrote on Patreon, I'm kind of sad because when Pocket Casts, Shifty Jelly, which uh, operated po Pocket Casts in the future, originally partnered with NPR, I thought it would start the I thought it would be the start of an open podcast network, but then that slowly fizzled out. I think uh Katie, I'm not Super familiar with how that uh, relationship has gone um, based on its uh, initial promise. But I think there are a lot of uh, podcast networks that were either gobbled up by a larger entity, a Spotify, say, um, or uh, just uh, uh, some that merged that didn't necessarily go as well as the audience wanted. Yeah. And uh, automatic owns Pocket Cast now, uh, the WordPress folks. So That's a good person to own it, I feel like, right? Yeah, Adam, I feel like company. that Indeed. moves it back towards being more of a chance of someday being more of an open podcast network kind of thing. So, you know, may, maybe it's not too late, Katie. Let's uh, check in with Len Peralta, who has been illustrating today's show. Len, what have you drawn for us this week? You know, this is a great show. Two great uh, uh, topics, uh, AI and Vision Pro. I went with the Vision Pro uh, just because it is the big thing here. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I, I I got Gavin's kind of weird eyes in this one, uh, the, the, the hurting neck. And then the other thing that kind of struck me was all Patrick the Patrick Mahomes to... is in there. 
<laughs> so, all this stuff you have to buy with the Vision Pro. So here's some things. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, some Vision Pro hot dogs, uh, the case starter kit, which has no case included. Um, I knew about the, the case and the extra batteries, but I did not realize you could add on Patrick Mahomes. That's that's amazing. You could. Yeah. Yes. It was yeah. for, for a fee. And then, of course, the other thing you can purchase with that is something heavy and, and, uh, and expensive just for fun. That was another thing that he's holding on there. Uh, anyway, uh, this one is called Vision Pro Pain, and uh, if you uh, <laughs> would like, to, if you'd like to hang this, uh, you know, if you can't afford the Vision Pro, you can go ahead uh, to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, where you're at your the DTNS lover level. You'll get the uh, image immediately, or you can go the old-fashioned way. Go to my online store, get it for yourself, and hang it uh, in uh, in your cubicle or wherever you choose. To put this image so uh weird Abby says uh vision propane and propane exp- accessories <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah for two hundred dollars if you want that very, real nice very, case very true very true uh gavin purcell uh as you mentioned uh my old boss um and now co-host of ai for humans let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work you can find the show on all podcast formats we come out once a week if you go to ai for humans dot show that is our website we have a pretty active tiktok handle and and on X or threads, all that stuff. It's all at, a- at AI for Human Show. That is our handles across the board. Indeed. Uh, if you are a patron, though, we are not done. Stick around for the extended show. It's Friday. And so on Good Day Internet, uh, we are doing another round of the great GDI debates. Join us as we try to answer the most confounding questions of all time. Just a reminder, DTNS is live. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We always like having you live, even though we're on demand. We'll be back on Monday talking about the experiments planned for the latest at latest Axiom 3 space mission to the International Space Station with Dr. Nikki Ackerman's joining us. Who knows better than Dr. Nikki? Talk to you then. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows include Chris Christensen and Justin Robert Young, and our guests this week were Wen Tui Dao and Gavin Purcell. Thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>